True North political commentator standing by right across this country of ours. In Ottawa, for the liberal side of things, we've got Greg McEachern with Enveronics Communications. In Vancouver, conservative columnist J.J. McCullough. And in Regina, for the NDP side of things, Sally Hauser is standing by. Uh, let me start with you, J.J., if I can. What do you think about this latest step here? The liberal government's relationship with the Indigenous community. This inquiry now seems like it's on the verge of being officially triggered. Your take, bigger picture. Well, it was interesting just hearing the comment from the minister right there, which was sort of a bit of a slip of the mask, right? I mean, the Trudeau government knows what it's going to do on the Aboriginal file. I mean, I think that there's a general consensus among all parties, among all Canadians, that we basically know what we have to do on the Aboriginal file. The fact is, is that they're choosing to engage in this broadly sort of performative exercise of holding an inquiry into a very narrow phenomenon, which I think, frankly, you know, to the extent that this is a problem, you know, that Aboriginal women are being disproportionately murdered, which obviously is a big problem. It is actually a much broader problem than that. It is the fact that Aboriginal people in general in this country are more likely to both kill and be killed than any other uh, demographic in this country. And we know quite well why that is. It's the same reason why anybody murders. You know, they come from broken families. They have, uh, you know, a lack of economic opportunity. There's drug and alcohol abuse in the community. So the fact that we're going to spend so much money going on this sort of performative exercise, largely to point the finger at sort of, you know, the white establishment that is the great demon that is so often often pointed the finger at in these kind of cases when we know full well what the root problems are and we can go ahead and sol start addressing those problems rather than you know engage in this sort of big spectacle which I think is largely an ideological political uh, bone to a certain base of the Liberal Party. Let's go to Regina Sally Hauser standing by. Sally your take on this and the balancing act that needs to be in play here. Well I, I'd have to disagree with JJ and I think the the inquiry is necessary for all the reasons he just uh, uh, mentioned. The massive connectivity between issues of um, drug and alcohol abuse, of <clears throat> systemic racism, um, you know, the involvement of the, of, of the police, uh, the lack of uh, jobs or any kind of form of uh, employment in a lot of rural and, uh, and northern areas. Um, and I think what the inquiry will do, and I, I have to, you know, this is a, an issue that I think it's, it's time to put aside a little bit of the, the partisanship. I have to applaud the Liberals for uh, the massive consultation process they've done, reading some of the summaries of uh, the consultations they've had across the country today uh, with elders, with uh, family, uh, with victims' families, uh, with members of the community. I think there's very clear direction that they're being given uh, from Indigenous people about what they want to see in this inquiry. And I think it is necessary to bring together all those, fr uh, that variety of factors. Um, I think understanding how they connect to each other is a very important part of, um, of moving forward and addressing some of these major, major issues. Greg, you're the liberal here with us today. Your take. Well, you know, um, Sally just talked about the issues that are connected, and I would say JJ's comments kind of show that the dis what's disconnected here. Um, you know, it's not that long ago some conservative bloggers, perhaps, and the Conservative Party were not in favor of this, as Sally, uh, you know, pointed to, to a note of nonpartisanship. The NDP called for this. Most premiers in Canada called for this. The Liberal Party called for this. Ronna Ambrose was chosen leader, interim leader of the Conservative Party on November 5th and November 7th said she backed an inquiry. Now when you change your mind, your, your party's position that quickly, one suspects that there might have been some internal disagreement and, I'm, and if there was, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I think as Sally said, for exactly some of the reasons that our fellow uh, panelists has pointed out, we need to get to the bottom of this. But as for a liberal sort of win on this, as JJ pointed out, I don't actually understand how that works because, again, speaking you know, very partisanly, um, if there was a win for something, the Conservatives did it, and they didn't do really anything on this. And in fact, for years, when it was brought up in the House, said that there was no need for this, citing an RCMP study that I think, you know, in, in the end seemed to be a, a bit flawed. JJ, your response. Well, I mean, I think that the fact is, is that there is kind of this ideological disposition to believe that all of the faults, uh, all of the problems plaguing the Aboriginal community can be pointed exclusively at sort of the white power structure as it's imagined. And I think that there's a lot of people in, across the political spectrum who are very afraid of being called out for being racists. And so they have to sort of genuflect at this 
alter of this, you know, exercise that we're all going to engage in as a country at the cost of, you know, millions of dollars. It's going to make a lot of lawyers very rich, but it's not actually going to address anything because the root problems are more complicated than just saying, you know, white, the white man is to blame. I mean, there's a lot of systemic root problems that have to do with a lot of the conditions that a lot of Aboriginal people live in and the structures of Aboriginal, you know, the, uh, the reserve system and the various, you know, political structures that exist around them. But I do think that the, you know, the, the Liberal Party believes that it has to show itself to be on the side of anti racism it has to show itself to be on the side of the Aboriginal people in, as I said, this very performative way. It is, it is I believe, but strictly no, an ideological exercise. If that was the case, why would, why would premiers in, of different parties throughout Canada feel the same way? I, JJ, I think because you're Because they're afraid this, of being uh, called racist. Very much they're afraid of being well, called well, are racist. You, are you in favor, uh, JJ, are you in favor of inquiry or not? It sounded as if... At, at I'm not in favor of inquiry. Canadians, I think it's a big waste of time and a big waste not. of money. Okay. Okay, and do you and think so, I'm racist for saying that? so? Well, do no, you think I, I'm racist for saying words, so? I would, what I'd like to see is the inquiry spend the time and actually find out some of the causes that Minister Bennett mentioned there. Do you think Bennett this is a mystery? There. Do you think she, that this is a big mystery, or do you do you think it is? No, I mean, this is the question, right? Do you, you think, think it is a great mystery? You, you why the Aboriginal people? JJ, people you've are, written on this. JJ, you've written on this. So tell us. I have written on this. So, 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 are you saying that Indigenous peoples have brought this on themselves? I'm saying that the Aboriginal community suffers from a lot of the same pathologies that causes people of any of any race, of any background, of any ethnicity to both murder and be murdered. As I said, you know, people of any race are likely to murder or be murdered if they grow up in dysfunctional households, if they have drug or alcohol abuse, if they have a lack of opportunity in life. This is why. You know, it can be, you can be a white person, an Aboriginal person, a black so person, if, so JJ, a, you know, an Asian so person. So, JJ, if there's, one, if there's one community that suffers from that more than any other in Canada, why is that? Well, I think that that's, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's a complicated problem. It has a lot of different root causes. And so I a think complicated that we know problem, the, might the that need an inquiry? Well, maybe there's already been a great deal of investigation of this. I mean, you're, to argue that this, that the plight of the Aboriginal person in Canada has never been studied by anyone is quite a preposterous claim to make. The RCMP has studied it. You know, legions of academics have studied it. The reason why no progress is made is because a number of these uh, sort of structural barriers, such as the reserve system, Todd, such as the Indian right, Act, I, 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 uh, I don't want to cut Sally. Yeah, I don't no, want to bring Sally, Sally into that. this here. Uh, Sally, what's your take? You're listening to both your, your confreres on the panel here talking. What's, what's your, uh, your your viewpoint? Well, you know, obviously there have been issues, you know, a lot of these issues have been studied, but, you know, in the case where you have the RCMP essentially investigating uh, you know some some of the issues around here. Well, what this inquiry needs to look at is, is you know, is the RCMP part of the problem, or you know, the fact that the, the Conservative government con the ban constable program, uh, where you which was a fabulous program in terms of community policing, people who are involved in the community, knowledge of the community, uh, who are providing those supports. When the RCMP have to cover vast swaths, particularly in northern and rural areas, where they have a total disconnect from from these communities. That's one example. So I don't know if, you know, an RCMP study of itself uh, is going to really get to the problem there, uh, the root cause of the problem. Uh, the other thing here, and it was, Greg mentioned all the premiers, the role that provinces play in this, particularly when it comes to child and family services, uh, social services, that's another huge part of, uh, of this problem. And, you know, so I, I think acknowledging that this is, yes, a vast a problem and there isn't there are not going to be any uh, easy solutions. It was good to hear, I have to say, Carolyn Bennett talking about immediate actions that they can take, that we're not going to, you know, we do know what some of the issues are uh, being brought to the forefront, really, uh, with the, the tragic shooting in Laloche uh, most recently. Um, you know, it, this is not exclusively a northern and, and rural problem. You see cities you know, like Regina or like, like Winnipeg with massive urban indigenous populations. Um, so I don't think, say, and we've, you know, we've studied this already, and we, we, you know, so we know what the issues are. We, we don't, frankly. The, we have to go deeper. Um, and I think, again, going back to what you're hearing from the families of the victims and from First Nations communities, uh, Indigenous elders, um, they're providing a really good and clear direction to the shape that this inquiry needs to take. We've hit 10 minutes, guys. We're going to have to leave it there. Uh, but spirited okay. discussion, I gather we're going to have an opportunity to talk to the three of you again about this as we move forward. Great to get the three of you on. JJ, Greg, Sally, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much.